Okay, well, 22 minutes later from getting to the supercharger, I was actually able to start supercharging. Um, I got a couple messages about the charge port may be frozen because the charge latch was unable to latch into the supercharger. Um, it indeed was frozen. It was trying, you could hear it articulating and not actually engaging. I uh, kept giving the orange Tesla logo, um, which means issue. <laughs> As first time I've got the orange Tesla logo it said that the cable wasn't fully inserted. So let's see if we just reseat it and see if that does it. Nope. My guess is that the latch mechanism is frozen. So let's just keep seeing if it will finally figure it out. Nope, another orange. Wiggle it around a little bit. Just for reference, this is the message it's given us in the car. The charge cable is unlatched. Fully insert. We're also getting a max charge speed reduced. Charge port may be frozen. Is that what that said? Charge port latch may be frozen. Sweet. I'm going to try the, uh, the switch or the pull string in the back just to maybe like prompt it to unlatch a little bit. So let's open this up. I'm going to go in the back trunk and pull the hatch a little bit. I think it's so frozen that we might not even get anything out of it. Um, so, you know, I tried a lot of embarrassing things, you know, jamming a house key into the thing, not like rough or anything to break it, but just to try and maybe get some of the ice out of there. Um, I also, this is the most embarrassing one, tried like breathing hot air into there, thinking that maybe just enough would be able to loosen it. That didn't work. And then the... Uh, Final embarrassment was walking across the street to the gas station to buy a hot cup of water. So it's been 10 so minutes while I was trying to unfreeze my charge port. It was right across the street from a gas station, quite ironically. And I uh, went and got a cup of hot water. I'm gonna try the hot water in the charge port technique and see how that goes. So stick with me. All right, let's try the hot water. See if that gets us anywhere. Let's unlock the car first. So we get in here. We'll do a little bit at a time here. Hopefully that will do the trick. Get in real fast. Not yet. Oh, well, I got it for a second. Guess not. This doesn't work. I'm totally screwed because I've just filled my charge board with water, so that's great. Got it. Oh man, guys, hot water trick works every time. <laughs> so, hot water trick ended up working. Charging started working. 
So I love Tesla as much as the next person, but I can see why people without access to a garage or access to an overnight charger be pretty frustrated by some of the things that they're experiencing, whether it's a you know stuck charger that you have to use the manual release, or if it's a frozen charge port like we show, we saw here today. Um, it, you know, it's it's the unexpected that can leave you kind of in the lurch sometimes. And so if you don't have access to a garage and you don't have access to overnight charging, you really need to build that into your workflow when you're using a car like this in winter months and cold places. Um, that's not to say that Tesla shouldn't continue innovating and figuring out ways to fix this. Um, just for the record, this was all done on 2018.50, the software version. Ironically, last night I got 2018.50.6. Not sure if the .6 release is a bug fix update or if it's meant to continue helping with that cold weather issue. Uh, that remains to be seen. Um, but, you know, it's something that they definitely need to continue working on, uh, figuring out ways to make sure that doesn't continue to happen. And whether that's a hardware fix or a software fix, that remains to be seen. Um, I do believe it's something that they will probably start building into their car, either maybe directly in the charging area. Um, and I think that would be a wise move at this point, seeing what everyone has been reporting. All that said, um, look forward to continued improvement and enhancement by Tesla. And if you have any great cold weather tips, certainly share them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, share, you know, all that kind of great stuff. Check out our other videos and we'll certainly look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, guys. Okay, so I watched the video. I always do it before I post it, obviously. And I realized that I was probably going to get lit up about messages regarding pouring water in your charge port. Either people saying, why would you do that? It's electrical pour. Why would you pour water in it? Or don't worry about it. It's fine. It's made for that. You can rain and charge, right? I just wanted to put it out there. Um, I was very careful about pouring a very little amount in. All I was looking to do was get the water into the small little opening that's at the bottom, which is where the charge latch comes up. And in order to do that, I left the lid on the cup. So just the little amount would be able to come out. It would be really nicely directed towards the bottom. It's not gonna just dump right into the charge port. Um, and then additionally, it was freezing cold out, okay? And that is really beneficial when you have hot, hot water because it evaporates super quickly. So really any, resi any residual water was gonna evaporate super fast because it was really hot and the air temperature was super cold. Um, and we were really directing it towards one specific spot. So before I posted it, I wanted to at least put that disclaimer out there because I knew I was gonna get some questions about that. Plus guys, the chargers are, the charge port's designed to be able to work while uh, it's raining. Um, are you supposed to dump cups of water in there and then plug a charge port in? Probably not. But um, for this kind of thing, I think it's a super easy fix. I have no issues once I plugged in and there was no standing water in there. So I think it's a very viable fix, super safe fix. Um, and I just want to throw that out there before I got lit up. Okay, have a great day, guys.